no, about the East. No, 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 All right. No, 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 did you want to go to the East or you want to go to BAI from when you came, came Let's back? Let's go to BAI and we'll come back to the East another time. Okay, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's what I would prefer for right now. Okay. So, 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 so we're back. We're B, uh, what, what year now we talk about where we're at BAI? Well, anyway, we said 68 in terms of Julius Lester. This is Ocean Hill Brownsville. Yeah. The struggle for community control, self determination, and education for black and brown people in yeah. New York City. Uh, I remember. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that because I was into Julius Lester. That's why I remember that. I, and I, that's uh-huh. when I probably did listen to the BBA, but I still wasn't into it. You know what I mean? I was. I think yeah. I was doing more activist work out in the street. I wasn't listening to a lot of radio. But I. But I got you. I knew Julius because uh, you know one of my partners from NYU, Joe. First name is Joe. He. Uh, was going to the Julius Lester Writers Workshop. Julius had a little writers workshop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because there were a lot of people who would go, you know, come through at different times. Uh, Jane Cortez, uh, you know, uh, Nikki Giovanni. I mean, numbers of people would go mm-hmm. through. So I, you know, I went a few times in regards to, to Julius. And, you know, Julius was an interesting guy because, you know, he was a liberal. Yeah. I guess you have to say in terms of his thinking. You know, he wasn't a radical. I mean, he was cool on a cultural tip because um, a book that I think is very important by Julius Lester is this thing, Black Folk Tale. That's right. That's right. That's what. Uh, that, that's why I first came into it. But, you know, Julius was on like, it's, it's weird. He's almost like cousins to, uh, I'm going to say it this way, to Leroy Jones before, you know, before before he becomes Mary Baraka. But, you know, it's, I look at them both as like a, a cousins at the, as far as the, 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 how they start off. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mean, that Black Folk Kills book was really, really something because, uh, you know, my children, you know, was something in terms of that, you know, knowing those particular stories, reading. As a matter of fact, I remember one time when uh, my older children were in elementary school at uh, Uhurasasa, which was the school that was uh, part of the East organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, We actually did and took uh, one of the stories. uh, uh, What what story was that? That's... uh, that I beat you making money. Mm. We took that. We took that story and made a little audio drama out of it. You know, we recorded it. Uh, it was part of a project that they had to do, and we did a little play yeah. uh, out of that. No, you know, you know what, you know what it is. Ju- Julius Lester reminds me a lot about, of course, about Oscar Brown Jr. So that was like Oscar. I think is out of Chicago. Julius is in New York, and so it's like they're, they're like again, like cousins. You know. You know, now, you know, the crazy thing in terms of Julius is that after, you know, this thing with, uh, you know, and it's uh, accusations of anti-Semitism mm. that were targeted to G2 more so to, to Julius, Julius becomes a Jewish yes. scholar. Yes. Yes. And teaches, you know, Judaism. Yeah, at, a, at a school higher education, I can't remember which one or whatever else it is, which I think is just, you know, so bizarre, man. It's almost really like if you can't beat them, join them, which is obviously what he went ahead and did. Well, I guess Julius was so much, so much. He talk about uh, cult, cultural hustleism. You know, he's like, a, he's a hustler, man. Julius still a hustler. I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's what. Yeah, well, that was a hell of a hustle. I mean, to go ahead and convince people that you a Judaic scholar and shit, man. You know, that that that's a hell of a hustle. No, you come know, on, go back ahead then. With that, man. Back then, you know, you, they would let one black person in, and then that black person would be king. Who's who's the brother? Who was the brother that hung out with again down in the village with um? In fact, he's the one that came up with the term of um, of of um, what's the, oh man, what's the the hips? Not the hipsters, but what, 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 what the beatniks? He was hanging out with the Kerouac and them. He was the only brother in the group, but he's the one that named them the beatniks. I forgot what this brother's name is. Man, I'll find I out. I don't know. I mean, because you know there was a bunch of people who were down there at that time. Yeah, so. but they only let one brother yeah. in a group. You know what I'm saying? That brother would stand out, and then that brother would have carte blanche to do a whole bunch of stuff. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, it could be like Calvin Hurton, you know, because remember, there's a whole bunch of people that are hanging down there. It's yeah. Calvin Hurton, you know, you got, uh, you know, at that time, Leroy Jones, 
Uh, Ishmael Reed yeah, is down there. You know, you got a bunch of people who are down there. I think her- and it's a cool, you know, on one level, it's a, it's a cool scene, but, you know, the thing that we were looking at, you know, folks coming from the community is how do we connect this stuff to the community, which ultimately is the contradiction that Amiri Baraka felt when he went up to Harlem after the assassination of Brother Malcolm to go ahead and start, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, black arts in, in Harlem there, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But anyway, you know, back to BAI. So, you know, 68, 60s, we have a little ambivalent relationship with BAI. We understand the importance of radio by going into the, you know, at 70, you know, I graduate, I, uh, you know, go to the East, I'm also teaching. Uh, 76, is it? Probably 76, well, 74. Okay. I get the assignment to become the editor of Black News. You know, G2 asked me, well, look, man, you know, we need to change in terms of the editor here. Uh, can you go ahead and do that? Black News out of what? Black, Black, Black News out of where? Out of the East. Out of the East, okay. the East. This is the uh, East newspaper magazine. I had had some experience in regards to dealing with uh, print media, uh, you know, actually even editing uh, in my, uh, you know, college days and after. Uh, one summer, I was actually hired to work a neighborhood youth corps had a newspaper. Yeah. And they made me the editor of the newspaper. Okay. Well, you know, you had the bona fides. You had the, you had the credentials, you know. <laughs> you had glaring certificates. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's interesting. I was just, you know, I was like the only black person there. And I used to raise hell, man. I'm like, listen, man, you know, I'm the only black person here, man. You know, uh, you know, you need to pay me what you pay these other people. Here. I mean, all kinds of, you know. Mm. You know and, and back in those days, you know, this is still probably the days of John Lindsay and stuff, man. You know, you get I a think, lot of I think that's done. just before John Lindsay, but go ahead, yeah. You know, anti-poverty programs, mm-hmm. all the rest of this old stuff. They poured a lot of money into neighborhood youth corps. Yeah. You know, it's not like this, uh, you know, I, gas, think, I think that's the uh, Wagner era. I, I think that was mm-hmm. the Wag. I think that was the Wagner era. Because Lindsay didn't come in until the end of the 70s. No, 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 but this is, we're talking about 60s. You know, we're talking about the 60s. I mean, I mean the end, of, end, of, end of the 60s, I mean. I mean, I look, I'll check. But, yeah. you know, I can't remember. I'm thinking it's still Lindsay. I'm thinking it's Lindsay and not Wagner. But anyway. No, no, Lindsay, you know, yeah, Lindsay could have been there like, like yeah, like 78, 70, I mean, 68, 69, on yeah, to the 70s. Yeah. But I think yeah. it was Wagner. That was Lindsay was, Day. Yeah. Before, yeah. So yeah. I'm saying, when I was in school still and all of that stuff, these were still like the Lindsay years. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. So anyway, 74, I become the editor of Black News. 76, uh, we end up establishing a radio program on WLIB. Okay. All right. The brother who does it, who, you know, goes ahead and gets it done, you know, we discuss it. I discuss it with him. His name is Adiemi, Adiemi Van Deli, you know, a good friend of mine. We used to, you know, we used to be real cut buddies. We used to be, you know, run together quite a bit. Anyway, uh, he gets an assignment. He has to go to Guyana, South America to go ahead and hit up uh, our, our farming that we're doing. You know, we, we're going ahead and doing cooperative farming in Guyana, South America, right? So he goes and does that. Somebody else has to do the radio program. G2 approaches me with it, and I'm like, G2, I don't want to do radio. I don't know anything about radio. He says, listen, man, you know, you got to take this assignment. You know, you're doing black news. You know, we can go ahead and create, you know, this, this kind of thing, which uh, ultimately it became a department that we called... Uh, IPE information, no, IPC, Information, Propaganda, and Culture. Mm-hmm. So I was the, I was the Minister of Information, Propaganda, and Culture. <laughs> 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 so anyway, 76, the, I do the but, but this is, this is, this is the error, this, this is the comrade error. This is the comrade, a uh, comrade, you got to do this, hey, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> no, G2, G2 gave assignments. He would see stuff in people, and mm-hmm. he would go ahead, and he would assign people to do stuff. And usually it was a good call because the people who went ahead and did, you know, whoever you assigned, they would succeed. 
they would find out how to succeed in whatever it was that he gave he gave you to do. Do this, something you may not have ever done before, had no knowledge of at all. He well, would go ahead. But the best also because G, G2 had a presence. Now, people say charisma. I understand that. But he had more of a of a of what charisma. We also had that presence. Plus, he's a big man. But yeah. I mean, he had that presence. I think that's what really yeah. pushed people, you know. He had a weird, he had a presence, you know. The only person I, when I think of G2, I also think of, you know, you know the guys on the scene right now, uh, 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 Philip Matthews. He, he's that kind of, that kind of person, you know. Uh-huh. You know I that, don't know Philip Matthews, but anyway. He's a historian, but you'll, 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 the, the happy, you'll, you'll, you'll run into him sooner, sooner or later. Don't worry about it. I got you. I yeah. got you. So anyway, I get this assignment, 76, and we do it. Now, a couple of years later, uh, Don Roja, who had been the editor of the Amsterdam News, mm-hmm. first he was the Brooklyn editor, then he was probably the editor of the whole Amsterdam News. You know, I had been doing some, you know, he had come by the E, we were doing some articles, I did some articles, for instance, I went to China in 77, I did a series of articles in the Amsterdam about China. I did all, you know, articles in other newspapers, uh, community papers about China. So we're, you know, we're going ahead and we're doing things. Don approaches me and he says, well, you know, we need a, a program because uh, View from the East was on Sunday morning. It was part of a strip of their public affairs programming on the weekend. What's that? And we uh, had... We, uh, on BAI? No, this mm. is on WLIB. LIB, oh, sorry, yeah, of course, yes, yes, yes. WLIB, right, AM, right? Mm-hmm. So, we've got Minister Farrakhan is on uh, WLIB, Dr. Carlos Russell, the yeah. founder of Black yeah. Solidarity Day yeah. is on WLIB. I love Brother him. Hamza, mm-hmm. uh, Hamza Alfie, mm-hmm. uh, who is uh, a, a police officer who is, you know, responsible for one of the organizers of the first black fraternal organization that had any kind of, mm. uh, you know, political understanding. The Guardian, mm. he has a program. So, you know, we've got these series of programs. Don approaches me and says, well, you know, we need to have a Caribbean program. And I'm like, well, cool. You know, I can support that. You know, I'll set up a meeting with you and Dave Lampel who at that particular point, which yeah. I can't remember, I guess he was the general manager of WLIB. Yeah, yeah, he was. And anyway, yeah. Don, it's the program, right? So he's got a program called Caribbean, which is on Sunday morning as part of that strip, right? Mm-hmm. Don goes ahead and he ends up going to Grenada to be the press secretary to Maurice That's Bishop. It. Yeah, for the new government. Yeah. So Maurice Marksman takes over the program from Don Rojas. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Samori had any prior radio experience or anything else, but he goes ahead and he does Caribbean, right? Yeah, because so Samori is really, really from what, St. Thomas or something like that? Samori, where he's from? Yeah, he's originally from St. Thomas or St. Vincent, something like that. I forget what... what uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember where yeah. where everybody's from, man. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying he he has Caribbean roots. That's what I'm trying. That's why oh, he got yeah, the program. Definitely, definitely, definitely has, of course. You know, this the dawn or whatever. You know, and and you know they see they got a vision, uh, a Pan African, Pan Caribbean vision. Mm-hmm. You know, in regards to you know bringing you know a progressive movement. You know to all parts of the Caribbean, you know, and it's like, even if in fact you, you know, exchange some parts, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, for instance, Don Rojas was not originally from Grenada, Mm. if I remember correctly, but he goes ahead, has these discussions with Maurice Bishop and decides to become the press secretary there, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, all of this stuff goes on. Uh, you know, to get back to, uh, you know, BAI, you know, Samori, after the experience of WLIB, and at a particular point, here's what happens at WLIB, and I need to mention this. Dave Lampel calls me into his office one day after I've uh, taped my program. Oh, he boy. says, look, I want to show you something. Mm-hmm. Dave Lampel, once again, the general manager of WLIB. Mm-hmm. 
he shows me the Arbitron. And there's this spike in the Arbitrons on Sunday during this time when we're doing these programming, this public affairs programming. View from the East, uh, Carlos's program, Hamza's program, mm-hmm. Caribbean, everybody. Lots of people are listening. Mm-hmm. So what Lampel decides to do is he says, He's going to make WLIB have an all-talk format. Right. And that's when WLIB goes to the all-talk format. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing is, is that none of us who were involved in making that happen on Sunday were invited to go ahead and participate in what they were doing when it became an all-talk talk program. That's Dave that's Van Pell. For a- that's Dave Van Pell to the T. Oh, yeah. And that's when, you know, people like, uh, you know, Emotep Gary Bird becomes a talk person because prior to that, he yeah. was a music that's, person. He's WWRL, yeah. You know, who was going ahead, uh, you know, he, he would do that. He was, you know, going ahead, doing music. There'd be some commentary, but it wasn't like it was black talk radio. Yeah. yeah. What the format that we had precedes Bob Law and Black Talk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then he brings in Mark Riley and all the rest of the, the rest of the system. Yeah, Mark. And, and, Mark, who interestingly enough, went to NYU. So he knew kind of Mark from NYU and. Uh, you know, some of the other folks or whatever who are born in at different uh, times. Uh, you know, later on, it's Pablo, Pablo Guzman. Before. Yeah, I got you. But the, the, the thing is, see, Dave Lamp- Clayton Riley. Uh, well, Clayton, let's, let's leave Clayton out of this. You know, we. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, I just found the tape because uh, one of the times I went to Cuba. Mm-hmm. And uh, w, uh, WLIB still had the talk format. Uh, this was before Clayton got all in, engaged in BAI and all that crazy stuff, right? You know, he interviewed me regarding Cuba. So I found the tape the other day. So I, one of the things in terms of, uh, you know, this thing that we're doing with Upama, the yeah. Ujima Pan-African Media Archives, yeah. is, you know, there's a lot of history here. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of those programs from uh, View from the East that I did, where I interviewed people like Alice Coltrane, mm-hmm. Robert Williams, uh, Chokwe Lumumba. Ooh. I mean, all different kinds of folks, man. Amiri Baraka. Mm-hmm. You know, I say I'm, I'm probably the only person who interviewed Amiri in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got interviews with Amiri Baraka from each decade, mm-hmm. you know, starting in the 1970s, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, uh, you know, really a, a lot of whatever else it is. But, you know, at BAI, we have to say, is that some changes were made. And I think that there was just pressure from the community to make uh, BAI a little more community-oriented and learning from all of these experiences that people have had at stations like LIB, both uh, LIB FM and then LIB AM, mm-hmm. you know, all of these things. So Valerie Van Isla comes, right? And Valerie Van is there. Uh, Valerie uh, gets me involved in doing some political kind of programming. You know, so I, I did reports about the Black United Front, about the formation of the National Black Independent Political Party, you know, these things. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that was my re uh, you know, my reintroduction, so to speak, into WBAI, which yeah. is now happening about 79. Yeah. The, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. There, I I want to I want to get this separate too. But let me go back because what you're tell what you I'm looking I'm I'm reading between the lines. Let's put it this way. You're saying to me if Dave Lampell wouldn't have kicked you all off, there wouldn't have been a political BAI. That's what I'm hearing. You understand? I'm not saying that's true, but that's what I'm hearing because you all have been successful and there would have been no need for for for. For uh, BAI to become BAI the way, as far as the, the black community is concerned, because well, you know, if uh, if you know, a view from the east 
and uh, Karen Beat and other shows had continued, then there may not have been a need for it, or it would not have been, you know, seen the same kind of way. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, just, I'm just conjecturing like that. Hold on yeah. a second, hold on a second yeah. before we get to the yeah. Van Islet era, hold on. Yeah. 